Greetings YouTubers, this is my 2002 Nissan Xterra and we have a check engine light now on for a Bank 1 running too rich. And I kind of did some tinkering with the O2 sensor, pulled it out, looked at it, put it back in. And now we got a code for running too lean. So I think we got an O2 sensor on this side. Now I'm not going to get into the finer details, how you can do testing with uh, your uh, scopes and all that. This is just to kind of give you some hope. Uh, if you have two banks on each engine and you just have one bank giving you a problem with a r code uh, running too lean or running too rich, this might point you in the right direction. Now, I've got an O2 sensor here that we're going to replace it with. I think I got this like 25 bucks online. And if you have an engine, let's say a straight six, and you just have one bank and you have a too rich or too lean code, then um, it gets a little tricky. Then you might have to start looking at your intake gaskets and all that if your uh, O2 sensors are reading okay. Typically with one bank on some cars, you just have two O2 sensors, one before and after the cap. Now mine, thank goodness, <laughs> the first one is right there. It's kind of easy to get to. I put an extension down there and break it loose and it should come out. So let's go inside and look at the code on the O2. Uh, let's see. Let's go inside and look at the uh, OBD2 code here. Reader and see what we got. All right. So there's the code we got. It says it's running too rich now. Earlier it was running too lean. So <laughs> I'm thinking the O2 sensor is probably bad. The first one before the cat. Now sometimes um, if you go in and... Use a system like this if you have a way to graph your O2 sensors. Uh, just start the car up, and when it warms up and the loop closes, uh, just check your O2 sensors, and uh, that might get you in the right direction. So we're going to go ahead and pull this O2 sensor out here and see what we got. I'll at least show you what it looks like. So I will go ahead and pull this uh, out, and right down there it is, and I've got my uh, tool set up here, so let's go ahead and get this out. I think you can kind of see it down there. There we go. All right, she's broke loose. Now we'll go ahead and pull it out. All right, I think we just about got it out of there. All right, there it is. Now let me tell you what, folks. If you got these clamps here, these little sharp edges, boy, you got to watch these things. These things will nick you. I just got another nick there. Story of my life. All right, so there's the O2 sensor. Now what's really dumb about this, Nissan actually has this adapter right here that you have to take off i'm not getting that off you can see i tried it earlier when i had the o2 sensor up before and after i cleaned it and put it back in i tapped on it a little bit and some white stuff started falling out of it now it said i had a code that the bank one was running too lean so i really think this is probably the problem here but uh nevertheless what i'm going to take is a um i think a dremel tool and maybe just slice this, or I may just go ahead and take a cut and wheel, a thin one. Just kind of nick this. If I hit this enough, this should break it loose from the O2 sensor. Uh, I don't know why they designed it that way, but that's just the way it is. So that's what we're going to do next. All right. Crappy way to do it, but... I gotta get this adapter piece off, so I'm gonna take a hammer now and hit that a couple times and hopefully break that O2 sensor out of there. We're just gonna use this just to put the new one in. If it works, then I can order one of these here. I just don't have time right now to get one locally, and they don't have it. And they don't know what I'm talking about, these parts stores. But on eBay, I can find these plentiful, so I think they're about $12 a piece. All right, let me see if I can get this O2 sensor out of here, and we'll use this. All right, I think I actually got it broke loose. The things you got to do just to save stuff, right? All right, yeah, we got it. Okay, it's coming. Nice. All right, there it is. Stupid thing. <laughs> actually, I'm going to set the camera down. All right, there it is. All that to get that piece out for that O2 sensor. And like I said, I'll order another one a little bit later, but why Nissan has to do this? Anyway. And of course, to do this job, you're gonna to have to have an O2 sensor socket. So just so you know. All right. All right, there is the new one, and this one has got paste on it already, which is nice. So we got to do is screw this in. 
like that. Then we put this in and see if our check engine light will go off and then I'll be happy. Then I'll have to just order this adapter. But we'll go ahead and put this down. We'll tighten this up a little bit, put this on, hook it back up and see what we get. And uh, hopefully this will take care of it. Now there's the old O2 sensor. I don't know if you can see this, but right there, see some of that white stuff inside there? That's actually falling out. It's like a, I don't know, white looking stuff. So I know this O2 sensor is shot and you can see how skinny it is. So most of them have a flared in with a big uh, bunch of threads on them. On the end, and also you got to have a 7 8 uh, standard uh, O2 socket to get that out. All right, let's go ahead and put this on. See if I made a video for nothing, or this actually will work. And hopefully, this will help you out. Hey, let me know where you're watching from. All right, we'll snug it down. And for you folks that are worried about, hey, you got a crack in that when you cut it. Well, trust me, it's not going to hurt it because that crack is very, very small. Hardly any exhaust will pass by that. This will just give me a good indication if this is going to work. All right, so that's tight. Now we'll go ahead and hook up our wire here, which is on the top, and uh, connect it up. We'll start it up, clear the codes, and see what we get. So hopefully this will uh, take care of the uh, PO172 and 175 on the side. Bank one, too rich or too lean. I'm just glad it wasn't the back of two sensor. Okay, well, after replacing that sensor, which right there, I don't know if you can see how shiny it is and how nice it, it looks right there. Um, I think we're kind of getting somewhere. Now uh, the code went from being too lean to too rich on that side, and I think I'm going to have to do the dreaded rear O2 sensor. Here are the codes currently. And once it's focused, you can see right there, the first code we got is a PO175. It says bank two, too rich. You down one more, and we have a um, let's see, PO PO 175, and let's go to the second code. Now, now it says here PO 037, heater control circuit low, bank one sensor two. That's the dreaded sensor that I'm probably going to have to change. I've already got one in the mail today. It's already here. But I think I'm just going to have to go ahead and replace the back O2 sensor. Here it is, and I was hoping this video wouldn't be too long, but these are the things sometimes that you go through on these uh, Nissans. And here is the O2 sensor. Got it for like 20, uh, this one here was only uh, $14 free shipping, which is great. The front one was about 22. So this side will have two new O2 sensors in it, and hopefully this will take care of this side over here. So what we're gonna do, we'll pull it outside, pull it up on the ramps, and see if we can get this uh, O2 sensor off here. And in order to get it off, uh, this one here takes a 7 8 big wrench, and the whole idea is to go ahead and kind of stick it in here like this, break it loose, never even, don't even try to use that in on one of these uh, O2 sensors, it'll just round it off. So we'll get this thing up in the air outside and hopefully get this O2 sensor on, and uh, hopefully that'll take care of the problem, and we'll see how our fuel trims are. They should be pretty close to zero. This side over here, I meant to say that it's near zero. This side over here, it's like minus 22 at times. It's it's just crazy. So pull this outside and see how we can get this O2 sensor off. The only thing I have a problem with on the old O2 sensor, I cannot get this over this here. So I may have to actually just go ahead and cut the wires on the other one. I want to be able to slip this over this without rounding this off, like kind of like this. And break it loose because this fits on there nice and snugly so all right we'll see what we can do here all right so we finally got the o2 sensor off and uh the things you gotta go through sometimes just to fix stuff you know but uh, sometimes if you use your head you can get it here's the old o2 sensor I actually had to break it off because i could not get this on there if you notice, my wrench is actually bent. I had to bend it a little bit, and I'll explain why here in a second. And this is a 7 8 I don't know. There was a place on the side of this that was had a dent in it. I took a saw saw, tried to cut it, and only cut it about halfway and wouldn't cut anymore because there was no room. Then I took a hammer and a pipe, tried to break it off, and only broke it off and got it off that way. And there's what's left of it, and there's the bottom of the O2. I, I don't know if it was bad or not, but... I know it keeps saying that that system is running rich on this side. 
so we'll see but anyway i had to bend the wrench uh luckily i had another one here now let me show you under here real quick uh, right there is where the o2 sensor goes and you can see there's really not a lot of room the problem with this wrench i had to bend it because there's a transmission line right here and I could not get that on there just like this it would hit this right here so uh, the more I bent it the more I actually got it in there then I make sure that's on there really really good on your on your uh, O2 sensor then take a secondary wrench and grab it down here and break it loose and take your hand and actually hold that up or make sure it doesn't slip off and this is how I got this off so actually after you do that you can just stick your hand up here and spin it off and take it off so uh, let me get back out here don't make you guys dizzy. So I tucked the wrench I was using. I tucked a secondary wrench on here like that and broke it loose. And the whole idea is you want to make sure you keep your wrench on the threads like this. This is really the only way you're going to break it off get it loose. If you try it this way, you're just going to round off the threads if you, if you use the open-end wrench on it like that. So that's that, and our new O2 sensor is behind me here. So now we got to do is go ahead and screw it in, tighten it down a little bit, and plug it up, and see if that side is going to run okay. So, uh, yeah, it's it was kind of a tough job, but like I said, on this side, I don't know about that side over there. It's probably the same way if you ever have to replace it, but that side over there is running perfect. But you see you got this transmission line that's bolted to the side of the transmission with a bolt kind of looks like a big brake line actually you go into a master cylinder but there's the o2 hole so i'll go ahead and screw that in we'll snake the wire up to there and we'll see what we get all right guys it's been about a week and you can see i'm out here uh, working on it today um i've got the two oxygen sensors on that side done um it seems to be working okay now it tells me that the catalytic converter is bad on this side. I have a PO420, which I'm not surprised. I always get vehicles with bad catalytic converters. I don't know why. Now, in order to do uh, the O2 sensors on this side, this side's not too bad. Uh, you stick an extension down in there, and you can actually break that loose. That side's been done. The one that gets everybody is on the bottom here. Here's the old one. I just basically cut it off. Looking at it, it doesn't look like it's running rich, although there's a little black there, so I don't know. We're hoping, well, I'm hoping that it's just a uh, bad O2 sensor. Let me get over here and show you what I have done. Uh, basically, in order to get into this O2 sensor on the bottom, you've got to take your drive shaft. You've got to unhook it here. Don't even try to take these bolts loose. I don't know how they put these on at the factory. I busted a couple wrenches. I gave up. These are 14. They will not come off. I heated them. They still won't break loose. And I don't usually have an issue getting bolts off. But what I did, I just tucked my C-clamp here, which is uh, right there. And just kind of tuck it off there like that and push it all the way. And I can get in here. And you can see I got the old O2 sensor out. Do yourself a favor. Take a big old 7 8 inch wrench like this and get up in there and get you a secondary wrench like this. Put it on there and give yourself a lot of leverage and you can break that loose. Uh, don't even attempt to use one of these uh, wherever it's at. Let me see if I can find the one I had here. Actually one of these. These things just kind of round off if the uh, O2 sensors in there are really tight. Uh, I mean, they work most of the time, but a lot of times uh, on the hard-to-get O2 sensors, they are really hard to twist off. These days, they just kind of round off. So this is why I went to the extra trouble. I've just gone ahead and put this dry shaft out of the way. And there's the caps. They're okay. I'll just force them back in. So now we can go ahead and stick our new O2 sensor in there. Oh, and by the way, some of you are thinking... What did I cut this wire to? Well, in order to get a wrench on here, you can't get this over this. There's no way. So, basically slide it over like that, and this is how I got it. So, just want to throw that clip in there. Oh, folks, I almost forgot to tell you. Here are my four new oxygen sensors. Got all these for $55 free shipping. And on the side there, you can see uh, the part number and everything on the box. It even tells you which one is which which is wonderful so I wanted to show you this so um, yep we'll finish up 
Okay, everyone, we got it all back together here, except for the drive shaft. Let me get under here. And I still have the drive shaft out of the way, but you can see the O2 sensor is in. And I'll deal with this drive shaft later. Now, the good news is uh, we got the O2 sensor in. This is how you can replace it on this side. You're going to have to deal with this drive shaft. I haven't decided how I'm going to put these caps back on, but the other uh, news is, which is not so good, let me check, let's go up on top. All right, uh, as we look at our scan tool here, we got it running. Our fuel trims are hoard. Horrible, still on long term. Bank two. So I've pretty much concluded that it has a head issue. It's probably got a fracture crack i don't know it's got new head gaskets on it on both sides when i redid the engine but it's just enough to keep those fuel trims uh, minus 27 that's that's just horrible you can see the uh, bank one is pretty good actually uh, about zero so i think what we're going to do is just end up pulling the head off and replacing it um but at least now you know how to uh, get in there and tackle these o2 sensors but you, the engine runs amazing i mean it's quiet you can hear it running here it's smooth but hey it's got four brand new o2 sensors on it but you know the head's not that big of a deal to replace i can do it probably in a evening or something but it runs great so that looks like that is the conclusion because uh i think it's the head because these runners here you got three going this way three going that side these are not split up here. The air coming in here is distributed evenly on both sides, so that's just why I think it's the head on this side. And also, one other thing I've noticed lately when I first started up sometimes in the morning, I have a brief intermittent miss in this engine, then it goes away. So it's probably on this side, and I say that's probably the issue. And this does happen sometimes to vehicles. All right, so that's about it, guys. Uh, that's the conclusion. As you can see, it's been running for just a little bit fuel trims are just you know gross and uh of course if you drive it long enough the check engine light will come on so at this point i am basically uh stopping what i'm going to be doing until i get a head i'll order a new head and put on it's worth fixing the car's in great shape perfect body and frame i have no more money than i have into it so the bottom line is if you have a head uh, or a uh, part of an engine bank one or bank two showing it's too rich and you're having some minor issues with it and you replace the O2 sensors and you might want to start looking at other things. Also, you can do a compression check. For now, we're going to fast forward into my next video where I'm actually tearing this apart. And I wanted to show you, I've got the intake off and all this and this will all be in my next video. After this, I'll put a link in this video to this next video. I've got the intake off. Couldn't find anything wrong with the intake here. Gasket's in good shape. There's the head that I'm going to have, eventually have to pull off. But what I did... I did a compression check. Compression check seemed out to be okay. Now, over here, here's the spark plugs. On this side, we have the bank that's running way too rich. And look at those plugs. See how black they are? Obviously, it's running rich. Now, here is bank one, which is fine now. I just have a PO420 on this side from a bad cat. So, I know my O2 sensors are working now. And I've ordered new catalytic converters for this. I'm actually going to do a third video on that. But... See how nice and clean these plugs are on this side over here, bank one now, where I don't really have much of an issue. Uh, it's burning pretty good, but this side, man, look at the, look how black those plugs are. So I'm trying to find out why exactly. Look at that back plug. It's, it's black. I'm trying to figure out why this head on this side is running rich. I'm thinking there's probably a crack somewhere in it or maybe... Uh, something going on that i missed i i don't know but it's got new head gaskets on it but i'm going to pull this head off and try to find somewhere to take it during our situation that we have right now in america uh, it's kind of hard to find anything open i'm going to have this head checked professionally and see if i miss something but definitely this side is running rich and that's what's led me to all this mess right now but i'm getting there so we'll get this thing running just like it should be but once again, on the right is Bank 2, which is running too rich when I get to PO175, I believe it was, or 71. On this side, the plugs are fine. They're burning just great. 
So uh, just thought I'd throw this clip in, kind of let you know that I am working on it. I'm not going to go any farther. I'm just going to go ahead and replace the head. I may do a compression check before I pull the head off, but I, I got a sneaky suspicion that we've got a head issue on this side over here. So that's about it. Uh, I guess we'll just wrap this video up. So if anything uh, comes out of this video, hopefully this will show you how to get in there and maybe help you uh, change out your O2 sensors on your Xterra, the 2002. So uh, I'll have an update later on this, guys, after I get it all back together. And if we take care of our fuel trims and everything looks like it's pretty evened out, I'll come back and let you know what I did and what the cure was. So until my next video, guys, I'll see you later.